Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got a very interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Civivi Knives. So Coke, so Coke, uh, so Coke, I'm going to let you take a look at that and then Google it, find out how to pronounce it, and then come back here and pretend that you already knew. Thanks so much to Civivi for sending this in for me to take a look at. Uh, I will have this linked right down in the description so that you can check it out if you want to. It does help my channel. Um, when you use my links, but that is entirely up to you. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This right here is designed by uh, Ray Laconico, and I, I imagine that's obvious for a lot of people. Uh, what it is also is 100% um, this is a budget version of the Esprit, which was uh, one of my favorite knives from Wii, I think for 2021... 2020? I honestly can't remember. I've reviewed a lot of knives. But I loved that knife. I still like that knife. And the biggest problem with it is that it is freaking expensive, right? Great knife, and I think it's well-priced, but it's expensive. If you've ever looked at that knife and thought, I love that, but I do not have that type of money for a pocket knife, this is the answer right here. Stick around. Listen to the review, right? But I'm going to tell you right now, I, I like this knife. It's not expensive. It's got great materials, and uh, it, it very much reminds me of the Esprit. So if that's all you needed to know, then there you go. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this knife. Overall length is coming in at seven. And it's it's it honestly is smaller than it looks. It's seven and a half inches. It really feels and looks like an eight inch knife. Um, three and a quarter inches on the blade length, and maybe three and an eighth on the cutting edge. How about some size comparisons? Just a few today up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. This is, it's closer I think to the size of the Rat 2, but it is, um, uh, has more of that presence that you get with the Rat 2, if that makes sense. How about up against the Demco AD 20.5, extremely similar in overall length to the AD 20.5, probably because it is almost exactly the same. How about up against the Benchmade Bugout? Again, very similar. There's just a little bit more girth to it. Sorry, I don't know why I use that word. I don't. I hate that word. Um, and then uh, finally up against the Spyderco Para 3. Alrighty. How's the action? Uh, this is a uh, Civivi knife. It is made in China. They are uh, known for bringing some very good quality to the budget world at table. Um, this is incredibly easy to manipulate and it is an absolute joy. Um, mainly because it just reminds me exactly of the um, Esprit. Uh, it's very, despite me missing it there, it's actually very easy to get underneath that thumb stud and do the reverse flick. You can also front flip it, but I'm really happy that they did not make this a dedicated front flipper. They gave you thumb studs, move them away from the cutting edge, and honestly just did a great job with it all the way around. There's plenty of access to that lock bar there, thanks to some scallops, uh, thanks to a scallop on this side, and it's cut slightly lower than the liner. So you can get the blade to drop down to your finger without double clutch, um, and then just turn it and shake it into position. Uh, this is very well done. The only thing that I think I would have enjoyed is if they made these thumb studs a little bit wider. They're just a little bit too narrow for me, um, but you know what? I'll take it. It, it works. Uh, everything is, is just great here, um, so I, I just don't want to complain too much. Let's go ahead and do carry profile. Uh, thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here it is surprisingly a little bit thicker than the Para 3, but you get some contouring. And honestly, I didn't I didn't even realize that until just now. It just does. It just didn't dawn on me. It doesn't feel like a thick knife. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Let me just scoocheroo that guy right there. Uh, it is not going to be a super cumbersome object in the pocket. Lengthwise, it's actually a just a it's just a hair. No, it's it's exactly the same as the Para 3. Uh, in terms of height, it's nowhere near as tall as the hump on the PM2 or the Para 3. Nowhere near the size of the PM2. Not going to be uh, a problem for most people. Uh, materials, what are we looking at? Get ready. No, we... <laughs> there it is. Right there. 14C28N. Yay! This is, uh, in my opinion, and you'll, you'll hear this echoed, 14C28N is generally speaking, the most preferred composition in the budget knife world. It is not a powder steel, but it has pretty fine grain structure. Uh, the best thing about it is that it is stupidly well-balanced. 
Uh, it has a great mix of edge retention, corrosion resistance, toughness, uh, and uh, when it comes to touching it up, it's fairly easy to touch up. Most of the time, just stropping it up just brings it back to life. Um, I love 14C28N, and a lot of other people do. Um, I, I think it's just fantastic. Um, so that's that's great. And then um, you have some other options. This one came in uh, what I refer to as Petrified Grandma's Couch. I do not like this micarta. It's hairy. Um, and then they chose uh, old green and old uh, – it's just like the, old, the color of old, right? It's just like – it's like khakis that have been left out in the sun and then you got them wet and then buried them under the ground and then dug them back up and put them back in the sun. That's <laughs> what it looks like to me. And it just doesn't – I don't know. If you like this color, then there you go. They have it, right? If you don't, they have a few other choices. I would choose almost anything else. Um, but okay, whatever. Um, so we have this weird hairy micarta. I know. It's like burlap. I just think it's gross, right? I feel like an, I'm holding an old basket, right? Like some old wicker basket that's like falling apart and all the little fibers are coming out of it. That's what it just, just doesn't feel good. Um, but um, if you like it, that's fine. They do they do have like G10 and some less like ugh, uh, color combinations. So definitely check those out. So we have this and then we have nested nested steel liners that's really nice i like that they're also you can see in there um uh, maybe you can't here uh it's also been um slightly milled out for weight reduction which is nice so weight i'm gonna guess this weighs about three and a half to 3.75 ounces let's find out yeah, three and a half yeah that's fine uh not a perfect one-to-one -one ratio but uh, very very close in terms of the amount of blade you're getting for the number of ounces and the weight Balance on this knife is, it's about right here. Not quite right behind the pivot, but not so far back that it feels butt heavy, right? It's fine. Let's measure blade stock. Now let's do the hardware check. I'll get out my tools. Or Did I already do that? No, I didn't. <laughs> I'll get on my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description. It talks about the tools I use in this channel. Pivot is T8, body screws are T8, pocket clip screws are T6, which is okay. There's just a couple of screws on each side. Minimal hardware and T8 across the board. Good work, easy to take apart. Let's go ahead and measure the blade stock thickness. I'm gonna guess that's about 120 thousandths, maybe 115, we'll see. It is, eh, it's closer to 115. Okay, 115 thousandths. Let's go ahead and move into the meat and potatoes here. Yup, this is a budget Esprit, but it's not an exposed frame lock like the Esprit. It's a nested steel liner lock, which actually makes this, in my book, a little bit better. You are able, because of the design here, you're able to get right up behind the edge and the thumb studs clear the cutting path, which is fantastic. That's so great. Um, the blade profile is also just absolutely optimizing 14C28N. We don't have a thick blade. It's thick enough to where it's, you know, if you just do it, it's not going to like shatter doing regular cutting tests, right? But it allows the blade to get fairly thin. In fact, pretty darn thin. Um, and uh, make good work of that 14T28N while still maintaining good toughness. You have a simple drop point blade. There is, um, you know, a, a drop, uh, a fairly, I don't want to say aggressive drop, but enough to where you can get your finger up behind the edge and it doesn't feel like, you know, you're going to slip over the top. Uh, just a really, really good EDC blade profile. Uh, this is going to get in and out of packages. It'll make short work of things like styrofoam, wood, rubber, rope, right? Uh, it's just a really, really good, nearly fully flat ground blade with a, just a little bit of a switch. Just a little, you just put a little, a little pinch of chili powder on it, right? Uh, the, I'm going to try and ignore the color of the scales because boy, do I hate this. Um, but uh, this the handle profile is excellent. The ergonomic lines are excellent. This just feels so good. Uh, really, really nice. The only thing that sucks is that for some reason, it, we and Civivi and Sencut will not get rid of this build. They will change all of the other elements about the pocket clip itself, but they will not get rid of this bill. These are so grabby. Number one. It's the first thing I feel when I grab the knife, right? 
It's not the worst thing in the world. I'm not like, oh, ow, oh, oh boy, I need to take a nap because my hand. I'm not. I'm not saying that, right? But I do feel it, and I'm like, eh, it's a stupid goose face clip on it again. The main thing that bothers me is that these are grabby. You walk by a let they're steel. It's not titanium. Titanium's way more forgiving, right? But this is steel. You walk by something, a ledge with a lip or something, and this is gonna grab it. It this is a super grabby clip, and then it's gonna bend out, and then great. And then you got this thing flopping around in your pocket until you can get back home, take the, you know, the screws out bend the clip back, unless you have tools with you, then great, good for you, right? But it's still, I don't wanna have to mess with that. Um, I think uh, pocket clips with a much more shallow bill, a, a slider rise, and it doesn't have to come up and over, just slightly up, and then stop right there. This is plenty. It allows you to push it into your pocket seam and that pocket clip will lift and rise to meet most pocket seam thicknesses and go right in your pocket with one hand. Right, it's just this. The bill is just dumb. Um, as it sits, the pocket clip is like other Civivi Sencut and Wee knives. It's kind of a B minus clip. It's fine. It sounds like I'm, you know, really, really upset with this clip, and I, I want it destroyed, and I want the, you know, the remains of its destruction to be buried 500 miles beneath the surface of the earth. I don't that not that's a little intense. Um, but uh, I, I don't. I, I wish that they would change it because this clip, in my opinion, has held so many designs back from actually being perfect, and it just drives me. nuts nuts. Um, but they have apparently manufactured 40 billion of these clips and they need to get through them before they can change it. I'm just kidding. Uh, maybe they don't care. That could be the other thing. They could be like, great, review the knife. We don't care what you think. We're going to keep the clip the way that it is. But there's my two cents, whether you ask for it or not. We have a lanyard hole, which is there uh, for lanyard people. Fine. It's out of the way of the pocket clip. Uh, we have a mounting position for lefties, which is fine because, honestly, as a right-handed person, this is incredibly easy to manipulate uh, with my left hand. So can I even – can I front flip it? Yeah, I can. Can you even – can I even do the side? Yeah, you can do the flip with the side of your index finger. Can I do that left-handed? Right. How many ways can Metal Complex deploy a knife during a review – without cutting himself. That many at least, but let's not push it. We have a, a backspacer that is also made out of petrified grandma's couch um, or whatever material is the rest of the scales, depending on what you get, right? Um, like I said, pocket clip is fine. It's probably a little bit too long. I think they could shorten these up, right? Uh, to make it excellent, I mean, you know, like the bug out clip, it's a famous clip for good reason. It does almost exactly what I'm talking about here. Um, the screws aren't recessed, which bothers me, but it's just, it's short, right? I mean, for the length of the knife, which is about the same as, uh, as this guy here, the Sokoko, the Sokoki. Um, it's about the, it's, we're at an angle here. That's why the bug out looks so much shorter. But you can see, I mean, the handle length is almost exactly the same. And we have a clip that's like, what? 40% longer? Why? Right? And it has way more bill. This clip works fine. And it doesn't ever catch on anything or grab out because the edge of it is so much more shallow. And it looks like, oh, there's not enough room to get it. That, you push that into your pocket seam and it will rise and go right over it every single time. Right? So that would be nice. But you can't always get what you want. Believe me, I've, I've tried. Sometimes companies are just like, great, thanks for the review. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, stop pin is located in its usual place and there's just the slightest little, I think, that, is there a slight indention? No, it's actually completely flat, which is okay, right? This knife does run on bearings, which you might be able to see if we take a peek in there. Can we see? I don't know. Maybe not. It does run on bearings. Um, the lockout is totally solid. No blade play up, down, left, or right. Lockout percentage, it looks like it's just barely there, but it's actually something like 30%. We can actually see that by look as more than that. It's about 40% or so where it's actually contacting the tang of the blade, which is fine. Um, there is no lock stick. There is no pivot lash. Very smooth and consistent action on the, uh, on the pivot there. And the detent, it's about medium, which is good because it's a thumb stud opener and a front flipper. Nice and clicky. And we have perfect centering with no detent lash. Best part about this knife, 65 bucks. Thank you. That's exactly where I expected this thing to be. I was fearful. I thought, oh, is this going to be one of those where they're like, it'll be $80, right, for, for no reason. Um, no. 
reasonable. This is a great knife. Great design. Literally the only thing that I don't like about it is the bill on the clip. Everything else is fine, right? It's, it's, it's great, in fact. It's better than fine. I wish the thumb studs were a little fatter. Um, but uh, I love the profile. I love the size. Um, it, this is such a usable knife. It's a fidgety knife. Like, it's got elements that allow you to kind of play around with it when you want to. Um, but, you know, when you're not in that mood, just use the thumb studs. They work just fine. Being able to choke up behind this pretty darn thin 14C28N edge is fantastic. I love the nested line. That... The nested liner lock makes this design, which is not exactly the Esprit, but it might as well be. It makes this design that much better. Um, absolutely. It, you don't have to worry about where your fingers are when you're deploying the blade. You don't have to worry. Am I putting pressure on the lock bar? Oh, I, no, I can't because they're covered by the scales. This is wonderful. I, I love, I absolutely love this knife, right? And, it, you know, to a lot of people are going to go, ah, it's really boring. It just doesn't have, I mean, how can you, like you know, just jump for joy over something so plain and generic. Because sometimes, and, and it was the case of the Esprit, it, it also looked very generic. And the more I carried it and used it and handled it, I realized like these, every last little element of this was so well thought out. It was not an afterthought. Ray Laconico can do that. Many designers can, but Ray Laconico has done that on many occasions. And it just works. Uh, it has what we expect the the us you know who are nitpicking everything these nitpicky youtube reviewers it has what we expect uh dollar for dollar it has the right materials it's got good geometry it's got great ergonomics right it's got all that stuff and it's a functional tool you know if you're a collector a knife enthusiast or just somebody who needs a good tool and wants to go out and use it there's something here for everybody this is a uh, recommendable knife it's going to go on two playlists it's going to go on my cheap knives i like playlist and it's also going to go on my uh, most recommended knives. This is absolutely excellent. And no matter who you are, what you're used to buying, I think pretty much anybody can enjoy this for $65. Uh, that's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Thanks again to Savivi for sending this knife in for review. This will eventually get given away on a live stream. So make sure that you are subscribed if you like to win free knives or if you just want to watch more knife content or whatever. If you just like hitting the subscribe button, that's fine with me too. Like I said, this knife will be linked down in the description. I would definitely recommend that you pick it up. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.